But one of the companies mentioned in that story, Finless Foods, was started by two New Yorkers, including CEO Mike Selden. Now, Selden just returned from a trip to Beijing, where he gave a speech in Chinese about his company's work in cell agriculture. Mark New sat down with Selden and began by asking him what he thinks of the seafood we eat today. It's got a lot of problems. The seafood that we eat today is heavy in large levels of plastic, of mercury, um, and in many regions of the world where aquaculture is, is less regulated, it has antibiotics and it has a lot of added growth hormones. And aside from that, uh, fish, because it has to be transited so far, it has to you know, come from the sea and move so far inland, it's got a very high risk for foodborne illness because it has to be in transport for so long. And so in doing this, um, we were trying to find a way to remove all of these problems all at the same time. Why not use plant-based material to create your seafood like some other companies are? The reason I think is really twofold. One, I don't think that food science is where it needs to be yet. And food science is really how you would take those plants and make them into something that looks like meat. Um, it's very much a wide open field. Uh, it, it doesn't have a very set path and there needs to be a lot more creativity in food science I think before we can get something that is a, a real perfect imitation of the meat that people are interested in eating. So that's part one. And then the other part is I think that meat's very psychological. I think that a lot of people when told, oh you can eat meat but it's from plants, will say that's plants, not meat. What we're making here is real meat. Scientifically, what are you doing? We take a real sample from a real fish of, of the meat, the muscle. We pull that out of the fish, and from that chunk of meat, we take some cells. Um, these cells need to be able to do two things that we want. They need to be able to divide very quickly, so turn from one cell into two. That's how cells grow. And they need to be able to turn into the cells that people want to eat. Um, so people, when you're eating meat, you're generally eating about three types of cells. You're eating muscle, fat, and connective tissue. These cells that grow out really quickly, we need them to have the ability to turn into the muscle, the fat, and the connective tissue. Um, so we, we pull these out of the meat and we grow them up in large quantities in a bioreactor. And a bioreactor is basically just a big tank that just churns the cells around and gives them access to the nutrients that they need to grow and survive. And when you say grow them, so for a small fish cake, which you have presented to, uh, for people to eat before, how long would that take? So, you know, with our production here in the lab, it took a fairly long time because we don't have the production facility necessary. Those cakes that we made, uh, we made about six of them, about this big each, it took about three weeks to grow out all the material necessary for those. But, you know, when we're at actual capacity, we can grow out um, thousands of tons in a matter of days. What's the most difficult thing about your process of creating the food? Getting the price down. Um, this is entirely an exercise in reducing price. We already have the technology to do 3D organ printing, which is essentially what this is. It's just instead of printing a heart for medical usage, we're printing fish muscle. And we already have cell culture to grow up the material that we need. But just these technologies are medical technology, and so they're very expensive. Our whole technology focuses on taking these, these areas and just making them uh, affordable for regular people to buy as food. How close do you think you are to producing the same taste as a non-lab produced fish? I mean, it's always tasted like fish because these are real cells from real fish. So the taste is actually not an issue for us. The cells automatically just taste like the fish that they are um, because the taste that you're getting when you eat fish is fish cells and we're growing exactly that. So that hasn't so much been the issue. Um, when we made our prototype, they were fish cakes. So we had fish and used it as an ingredient. We mixed it together with potato, we breaded it, we had seaweed, so it was a whole like, cooking process. And for that, it tasted exactly like fish. It was an ingredient. In order to get it exactly the same consistency and the same mouthfeel and the same um, like look of real fish meat, that will take a bit more time. We um, have made significant progress in it. We are now putting out um, pure fish prototypes at this point, not just an ingredient. Um, they're not exactly where we need them to be yet, but we feel um, the future is bright. But how are you going to get over so many people thinking this is weird uh, Franken food? We are taking fish back to the way it used to be. Fish didn't always have mercury and plastic in it. This is sort of a recent thing. We're bringing fat fish back to being the original healthy protein that it should be. Your view on where you think your product can fit in? We plan on producing uh, fish 
uh, as an ingredient in unstructured things like uh, sauce, pastes, uh, mash for sushi, surimi by the end of 2019. In order to get that real thick tissue, the, the sashimi, the steaks that people are, are, very, are very used to and, and see as fish meat, we plan on having um, a prototype of that by the end of this year, um, but then we plan on having that actually um, on the market by 2022. You recently got back from China, where you actually gave a speech in Chinese, impressively, about this whole topic. Uh, what did you find out about the market there? Are there any companies that are involved in this space? So far, um, I don't know of any research that's gone on in China in cellular agriculture. Um, that said, People seem incredibly excited. I mean, China is a sustainability leader. No one is doing more for the environment than China is, like both by like percentage of population and by just actual like objective numbers. So since the Chinese government has recently focused massively on sustainability and specifically on agriculture and also on reducing meat intake in certain branches of the government, I think that this technology is perfect for China. And I think that China um, not only should jump on, but I think will jump on.